Hello and welcome to Mediumship Matters with me, Hannah McIntyre. And today I'm joined by another special guest. I've got the beautiful Kim Alexis, who has joined us today to talk about her journey, her experiences with spirit and share her knowledge with us. Welcome, Kim. Hello, Hannah. Thank you for inviting me to join you today. Thanks for being a part of it. Excited to have you. If you could just start by introducing yourself to the listeners, what do you do? So basically, I've got a lot of tools in my toolbox. I am a psychic, spiritual medium. I'm a crystal healer. I'm a hypnotherapist. I'm a past life regressionist. I run retreats, spiritual wellness retreats in Sardinia. And I am an author. You are. You have so many things. I went on your website. I was writing down all the things and I was like, oh, blimey. So amazing. How did you get into spirituality? Let's start at the beginning for you. How did that start? Um, It kind of started when I was in my teenage years. I had an interest in the esoteric and I was reading books on um, Buddhist monks and playing around with astrology and runes and tarot cards but I never really understood any of it I was just kind of fooling around with it uh, you know and I do a layout with cards and I think oh, I don't know I don't understand any of this <laughs> <laughs> but I um, I was just drawn to those things and um And then when I was 17, I went to live in Italy on my own, running away. And um, I lived in a little village, a very beautiful village, um, not far from Rome. And there used to be um, a lady there that read the coffee cups. And so I was always going to her and, you know, she'd make you drink your coffee and then she'd turn, you turn the cup upside down, let it dry for a bit. And then she'd say, oh, I can see boats and I can see airplanes and travel and you know and all these things and I I was like I was you know it was amazing for me um so it kind of all started like that but skipping many many years on um well actually not many years on through my travels I um was working in Morocco with crystals but at that time I didn't know that they were semi um that they were uh, healing stones to me they were just semi precious stones and I'd have to sit outside this jewellery shop surrounded by all these crystals and have to entice the tourists in and I'd make a bit of money (laughs) (laughs) so um, it was kind of you know ironic that many years later I became a crystal healer Um, and uh, I just um, learned along the way through my travels different experiences that I was having um I was reading a book one day I I I I then switched on the radio and there was the San Francisco earthquake and I being you know like a news flash Mm -hmm. this is in the 80s and I looked through the book that I've been reading because I because I thought no 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 I just read about that I just read there was a San Francisco earthquake but of course I looked through the pages and it wasn't there I'd already had the premonition before it happened yeah um so you know things just started excuse me so things just started to uh unfold unfold and slowly slowly you know till eventually I got into spiritual mediumship and and all the things that I I do now I'm gonna have to have a swig of my uh, drink do it so Have you had any sort of formal training for your mediumship or have you just been taught by the spirit world? Um, I've been taught by the spirit world, really. But when I did come back to the UK um, many years later, I um, it was actually a neighbour who I was having a conversation about spiritual matters. And she said to me, oh, you know, there's a spiritualist church not far from here. And and, and I was like, what's a spiritualist church? <laughs> I had no idea. And so we went along and then I saw there was a medium on the platform giving messages to the audience. And I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And because um, I knew I could um, through all the other experiences that I'd had. And so I sat in a circle in this church, but 
had a few kind of dodgy experiences there. It, it wasn't all love and light, I have to admit. Mm -hmm. um, but that was, you know, how another part of my, my journey began. And then, as everybody does who's in London, well, even outside of London, you end up going to the College of Psychic Studies in Kensington, doing a few courses there, which was more or less just me sitting there giving readings to people, you know, and, mm -hmm. which were already there for me. Uh, sounds egotistical, but I, 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 I could already see and hear and feel and sense. And but it was good to go and sit with like-minded people, and um, yeah, and do that and do those things. And I actually used to do it with a friend of mine called Lorraine, and we kind of used to take over the class. So we, we it was like the Kim and Lorraine show. <laughs> Oops. So yeah. you also teach, don't you? So how did you, yes. find, if you can do it so naturally, did you find it quite a leap when you were then needing to teach students who perhaps didn't have it as naturally available as you, or have you learnt ways for them to be able to just unlock that connection in them? Um, yeah, I think I, uh, how do I put this again? I, I think I'm a natural teacher because mm -hmm. I enjoy it. I'm passionate about it uh, in the sense that I want other people to know and feel and sense everything that I do. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like an excited kid. You know, I'm like, no, but you can do this, you know. So I'm very passionate about teaching people yeah. and, and drawing out of them their abilities uh, and, you know, and helping them in whatever way I can, whether that's teaching them with tarot or getting them to sit in front of a person and write things down about how they feel about that person or whatever the exercises are, um, holding objects, you know, so they pick up on the energy of the objects and psychometry. Yeah. So I just, I just enjoy teaching and I want people to <clears throat> feel, um, that there is just so much more to this life than they could possibly imagine. Um, and I just want to say the reason my throat is going like this is because I know spirit wants to speak through me and this is what happens <laughs> when I get in other mediums and psychics and spiritual people. So it's like, no, you can't. I need my voice box. Yeah. Oh, well, then if they come out and give us an address halfway through, we'll just keep recording and then you can listen back to it and find out what they've said. Uh, <laughs> let it go. That's fine. That's fine. So you do these amazing looking retreats in Sardinia, did you say they are? Yeah, 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 because look, my love. Sorry, no, go yes. on. I said they look gorgeous. Go for it. Tell us about them. Because of my love of Italy, and I, I've spent much of my life living in Italy, and um, yeah, and kind of. In fact, last year I was two months in Italy, um, living out there for a bit. But uh, and I speak the language, and I I just love everything about Italy. I lo I love the country. I love the language. I love the people. I love the fashion. I love. I anyway. I, so um, I. Uh, thought it would be nice to try and do what I do here in teaching but do it somewhere beautiful mm -hmm. by the sea and um, I would go to a restaurant regularly where there was this um, waitress and she was Italian and I got talking to her and she was from Sardinia and I, I said do you know anywhere you know that would be a nice place to teach in Sardinia and she gave me the details of a friend of hers um, a uh, little hotel and I looked it up and I was like no 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 that's not the right place it doesn't have a pool and it's not in the right you know it's it was like no 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 so I just thought let me just find somewhere um somewhere else and I I as I was in my search I did and so I jumped on a plane and I flew out there and I thought right, I'll do a recce and I got to um Cagliari, which is the capital of Sardinia. I got a taxi and I said, this is where I need to go. And um, and after about an hour and a half of driving around, the taxi driver said, I'm taking you back to the, to the town, to the capital, to Cagliari. He said, I can't find it. I don't know where it is. And I said, you can't turn around. I have a reservation. I'm going to be staying here. You've got yeah. to find it. And um, so eventually, like, this oasis opened up, you know, in this beautiful rural place with the rocks and by the beach and just stunningly beautiful. 
And so that's how I got to find this place. And that's how, where I do my retreats. In this it does look amazing. How lovely. And are they annual or do you do them more than once a year? Annual. 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 Perfect. Yeah. How lovely. Yeah. Now, tell us about your book, Walking Between Two Worlds. Tell us about, what's that about? Walking Between Two Worlds? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's called The Adventure of Spirit. <laughs> um, Got one here. The adventure of spirit Yay. walking between two worlds yeah um what's it about it's about as I mentioned when I left for Italy when I was 17 um so basically it's a travel book it's a spiritual teaching book and it's got a bit of sex and romance thrown in <laughs> I say is it a, is it a biographic Story. Yes. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. Oh, amazing. So, when did you write that? What inspired you to put it to paper? About, oh, I don't know, four. I finished it around four years ago, something like that, in, in Italy. I went to Italy at the last to, to finish it off, the last sort of few weeks of the book. Um, I uh, so it's about um, when I went to Italy at 17 I met up with another girl and we hitchhiked across well we took a boat from Italy across to Tunisia and then we hitchhiked through Tunisia and Algeria and Morocco and um, Spain and Portugal and France and so it's about all the adventures along the way and all the spiritual uh, adventures so that's why it's a spiritual teaching book because there's past lives in there there's premonitions in there there's spirit guides in there there's um, fortune telling you know reading of the hands there's the coffee cups there's the crystals you know it's it, it's all in the book but it's also giving a, a a kind of description or an understanding about what these things are and how they work so, um, and as I said, and then along with, with all the adventures and, as I said, and a bit of romance thrown in. Oh, sounds incredible. Amazing. So um, tell, us, tell us some of your experiences with the spirit world. Tell us some times that spirit, I mean, obviously that thing with the earthquake is pretty profound, but what else have you had where they've really taken your breath away? Um, what sticks out in my mind is my own father's passing um my i i used to stand on the platform at some, some spiritualist churches quite a few years back now and i, I and then i stopped doing it because it was just too nerve-wracking <laughs> i don't want to do it. why am i putting myself through this i i loved it and i, I it was kind of a love-hate thing so um and i remember telling my father that i was doing this um um my father lived near portobello road and there's a church not far away a spiritual church not far from there and he's he actually said oh I'll come along and see you and I was and I and I was absolutely petrified thinking oh my god you know have my father in the audience but anyway so he was my father was an atheist but he'd read lots of you know he'd read the Quran he'd read uh, he read lots of books you know bibles and all, all sorts of the different religious um teachings but he was an atheist anyway um when my father was um my father had a stroke and it, it was all very quick. Um, he passed within sort of a week of having the stroke. And that whole week, my arm was in agony because I could feel my father's hand in my hand hanging on literally for dear life. And the excruciating pain, and it was even more painful when I would do any workshops because I was then connecting into the, the higher realms. Mm -hmm picking him up even even more anyway when he did pass um in the hospital um I was with my brother I was with my stepmother um all of a sudden I heard my father say where am I and I was like oh dad you know you're not in your body anymore and uh, he's going well where am I what's going on what's going on so I said dad you know I just want you to look up to the light and in the light, you're going to see your dad and you're going to see your cousins and your friends. And all of a sudden, um, he, he, I, I was walking out of the hospital to my car whilst I was saying all this to him. And uh, I got into my car and then I uh, all of a sudden he went, oh, oh. It was like he was having recognition of his loved ones, Aww. you know. 
And he's going, oh, oh, oh. I was going, yeah, yeah, just go up, just go up, Dad. And then all of a sudden there was like this breath whoosh out of me. And that was my father's release to the spirit world. Oh, how amazing. And he always comes through now whenever, you know, uh, anyone does a reading, you know, or I'm in a church, they go, oh, your father's standing next to you. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's amazing. So incredible, isn't it? Spirit is so amazing. Yeah. So yeah. you don't do platform anymore then? No. Knock that on the head. Uh, so, But you do do one-on-one readings, don't you, where you do mediumship well, connections and things for people? Psychic, yeah. Psychic readings, um, yes, and connecting to spirit, loved ones. I mean, oh. I do that literally every day. Um, it wasn't the plan. The plan was <laughs> to be a well. <laughs> never is the plan is it no, <laughs> I was gonna no. have a ready meal business <laughs> so <laughs> who knows yeah yeah they get you um, they do get you and um yeah kind of dragged me kicking and screaming actually <laughs> <laughs> well I think we so, sometimes we have to be dragged it's not for the faint of heart is it it's, it's not it's not an easy it, path it's not an easy path at all And it certainly wasn't an easy path for me at the very, very beginning. I had quite a lot of very um, distraught experiences, actually. And Mm. I, yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't, and not that I don't want to frighten anybody because it it, it is the blessed life Mm -hmm. and it is the best path. And there's nothing greater Mm -hmm. than doing spirit work and and being on the spiritual path and being of service to humanity. I mean, it's the biggest deal that you know a human being can have whilst we are on the earth yeah but yes my journey was not always um always a good one and um but anyway we won't go into that (laughs) yeah it's it's so funny I mean it is it definitely does trigger you and bring up all of your shadow stuff to deal with doesn't it whether you want it to or not I mean I know when I started I thought it was going to be escaping me (laughs) And then it came back to inextricably stuck with myself and having to face all of that. It is, it is difficult. Um, And there is hardship in it. And especially for you doing it on your own in a foreign country, regardless of whether it being one you love or not, that is big. That's a big path. Well, I was running around like a headless chicken trying to to find people to help me out with what was happening you know which I did find you know because obviously spirit were leading me to those people as well yeah. um and you know every experience is a learning lesson and I do those things for other people now you know when they're going through their 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 dark night of the soul yeah I'm like yeah yeah, yeah. okay this is happening for this reason and da 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 yeah. you know we don't I mean, have it one- ourselves and we don't know yeah, and the, by the time you're on your sixth one, you're like, oh, this again. Just got to hold fast, <laughs> wait for it to yeah. pass, cry the yeah. tears, become a recluse, yeah. and then it'll move on, and then I'll get what I wanted at the end of it. So stick in there. Okay, do you, so you work with tarot. Is that traditional tarot you do? I don't work with tarot, actually. Oh, I, I, so. I teach with tarot. Oh, okay, I yeah, I thought you'd mentioned tarot. tarot. Yeah, I, I only use the tarot for them, you know, to help them, you know, with the images and to bring through, you know, the messages. But I don't actually use any tools mm-hmm. um, because I just, um, I, uh, I'm i clairaudient, so I hear. Yeah. And I relay the messages word for word um, from spirit uh, and I sense. And my clairvoyance was very strong um but I don't see I I don't my my clairvoyance is not my strongest um it it was in the beginning but that was one of the things that I was like I don't want to see this so I kind of I I switched it down you know I switched it off not consciously subconsciously whatever so it's one of my strengths so I I feel when I get knowings but I spirit speak to me and I I relay the messages word for word for what spirit are telling me amazing amazing so if you're hearing it you must be really accurate god I wish I could hear it like that because if you're not hearing the words obviously interpretations coming in isn't it and things like that so you must be you lucky ducky how lovely so, you don't hear uh, hmm? 
you don't hear no what, well you, you... I just know I don't know where it comes from really it's just there but I always say to my audiences you know spirit don't have a voice box it'd be great if they did because they'd be talking to me and I could get around the whole room just going boom 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 but it doesn't work like that for me it is just a knowing really um yeah I just know stuff about them and um, yeah. sometimes it's things that people would expect to know. And sometimes they have to think a bit harder because it's not in their remit of what they would necessarily expect their loved one to come through with. So uh, yeah. it's finding yeah. that space in it. Uh, to yeah. work, which is I really sometimes fun. say it, it, it's like being in a pantomime where the you know, spirit person is going, oh, yes, it is. You know, and the person goes, no, I don't know that. And they, and the spirits we go, they do. Yes, yeah. they do. You know, and the client's like, oh, I don't know. I don't think so. No, no. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it's not. Yes, it is. And until eventually then the client will then go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and they get it, you know. It's it's yeah. such it's such a funny way to work, isn't it? And so hard to explain yeah. to anyone that doesn't do it because yeah. they'd just be like, well, of course you can do this. We've all seen Ghost Whisperer, and I'm like, wish it was like that, but it really isn't for yeah. me. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes so- it is. Sometimes it's easy. Yeah. Sometimes it's bang, 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 bang. You know, it it just flows really easily. Yeah. And other times, it's 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 a little bit harder. But but I think that that could be because of the energy of the person. They can be a little bit more guarded. And some people are so open that it's just an easy ride to bring through all the all the messages. For sure. So what advice would you give to somebody who is looking to start their spiritual development journey? What do you wish that you had known when you started working with spirit? Um, I think, well, obviously, you've got to have a really experienced teacher, mentor. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, and this is a little bit controversial, uh, I think that we need to know about grounding and protection and closing chakras and opening chakras and getting ourselves very in our bodies and very grounded when we finish working with spirit. But other people say, well, no, you know, we are spirit and we don't need to do that. But I think it's a very individualistic thing um, because... I teach people and I and what I needed when I when I was learning was to be very grounded and was to be to know about the chakras opening and closing and protection. That was mm-hmm. for me personally. As I said, it, it, it may not be for everybody. Um, and the reason for that is because if you go out after, you know, when you've been connecting with spirit, and you go out on the tube or on a bus or on, you can be picking up everybody else's energies. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to be doing that. You want to be on when you're on and off when you're off. Mm-hmm. And sometimes in the beginning, spirit are so excited to work with you that it's like they want to be driving the vehicle. They want to be driving the car. And the, but the vehicle's you. And you've got to be in control of your vehicle. You've got to be saying, I'm working now, I'm not working now. So that, yes, it could be lovely that you're receiving messages throughout your day. But if you're at work doing your job, you don't want to be picking up messages, you know, from spirit all day long when you're trying to focus on your job. Mm -hmm. So I'm very much about learning to be grounded, closed and protected. As I said, there are some people out there go oh no that's rubbish you don't need that at all and that's fine because I never try to put anybody into yeah. you know can't put a, 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 a round peg in a square square hole everybody's different yeah and everybody's got to do what works for them I would say I agree but in a slightly different way which is interesting so I would say that spirit because spirit omnipresent if you're reaching for them you will always pick up on them so it's not that spirit are trying to communicate through you all the time it's just that if you seek you will find it so if Mm -hmm. you need to shut down to be able to disconnect then that's what Mm. you need to do because they're always there so if you go are you there they say yes and then you can't say well they're bothering me all the time because you asked (laughs) so it's it's such a um and I think 
I say to my students all the time, learn from lots of different teachers for that reason, because we all have different ways of perceiving and receiving the energy and working with the energy. And no Absolutely. one has all the answers, do they? They just have their experience. Absolutely. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah, so I, do, I, I do. I do remember. Sorry to interject. I do okay. remember one time at a spiritualist church. Uh, I won't name the place, and um, a, a teacher was teaching, and the, the girl stood up to bring through spirit, and she brought through like a mother and father at the same time, and the teacher said, "Oh no, you can't do that. You can only have one." Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "This." These these spirit beings have lovingly come forward, obviously together, and have got messages that they want to share together. And the teachers go, no, 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 you can only have one. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what I mean. As you said, you know, learn from lots of different people, and I, it's about finding your own formula. Absolutely. You, what works for you? Because what works for you doesn't work for the next person. We're all individualistic in how we work and you should be as a medium it's one of my pet hates when you go to see a medium and you can tell who taught them because they are just following the formula they even have used the same expressions as their teacher and you think you've got to find you in your medium absolutely absolutely yeah it's such a funny thing so what advice would you give to somebody that's looking for a medium how do you find a good medium how do you know who to trust Well, I think, you know, in the, if you're not on the, not talking about the online world, if you're in the, this, the, this world, then obviously you're going to, you're, you're going to have to talk to people, um, go to places where there are mediums and ask about recommendation. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, the, the best, that is the best service. You know, if you've got good uh, recommendation, then, um I mean, that's certainly what keeps my business alive. You know, they someone's had a reading, they've told someone, they've told someone, they've told someone, and it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. I've been doing this for over 20 years. Amazing. <laughs> so it works. But online, obviously, you re- you can read um, Google reviews and, uh, and, again, what other people have said about the medium, although I, I guess there's a lot of fake stuff out there. Um, um Mm. I, I, I suppose that's a bit of a tricky one yeah. um, but at the end of the day it's about recommendation and, and, and finding the, finding out that you've um, definitely got people who've who are satisfied with what they were given by the psychic by the medium because the worst thing is and I actually say this to my clients the clients that come in that've never had a reading before mm-hmm. i say great i love a virgin the reason for that is because you will leave here very satisfied rather than going you go to someone and they give you all sorts of rubbish and they plant terrible seeds in the mind of mm-hmm. people and they take that with them for the rest of their life thinking oh i'm never going to have a baby or i'm never going to get married or i'm never or whatever mm-hmm. it is that, that some foolish you know psychic has told them and um so that that kind of annoys me you know that there there are there are people out there like that Mm -hmm. but having said that there are there are good psychics and there are bad psychics there are good car mechanics and bad car mechanics they're good dentists and bad dentists there are good you know it's it's how it it rolls that's how it rolls yeah but yeah, I always kind of make a joke of it and say, if somebody comes and they never had a reading, say, great, love a virgin, because you're going to leave here very happy. And, you know, and you know that that person's going to be, um, yeah, leaving in a, in, a, in a satisfied state. I think you're right. And I think also it's perhaps, like you said, with the seeds, because I've met people that have had very negative seeds, including you're going to die by the time you're 37 and stuff like that said to them by mediums, which has been incredibly useful. Um, But I also think you you have the right not to take on board everything that is said. And people don't talk about that. If if you don't like it and it comes up for in a reading, it's not set in stone. The reason it's come up in a reading. Yeah, you can change it. Take ownership of it. Exactly my words, uh, you know, are... This is not set in stone. I use yeah. those words myself. 
you know take from this what you 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 know you want but um, it's it, it, Hannah that's easier said than done because know. you know people come along and they can be quite vulnerable I know. Um, and they do take in um, those those kinds of negative disgusting uh, comments from yes idiot you know fools <laughs> yeah I mean who in their right mind is going to tell somebody they're going to die I mean uh, no well, what is the what is the point of that I agree. I've actually only ever had one client in my life that I did know that information and of course I'm not going to tell her no you have to be uh, you know diplomatic as well that's not I don't hold back uh, uh, yeah uh, that's that's the one time in my life that obviously I did. Yeah, of course, because you also knew in your knowing that it wasn't something she needed to know. There was a sentence in there that sounded a bit like Dr. Zeus, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So wh- why would you tell someone? But I think it's things like that. They're easy to get shock factor from and easy to get a good reaction from, but it doesn't necessarily make them true. And so I would always suggest to people to not limit themselves to one medium. So oh, you know, cool. there'll be there's good readings, there's bad readings. I've done bad readings and I've done exceptional readings because it's always mm. an energetic experiment. You don't know where you're going to be. You know, you don't know what energy the sitter's is going to bring. And some people are more compatible with certain energies than others. So Absolutely. it's not a personal thing, but we just you know, have to be educated yeah. on what they need to look out for. And if you if someone tells you a death date, dear listener, run a mile absolutely run a mile absolutely I I have got um I have got a, a client that I actually said to her go and get a second opinion it wasn't about death or anything you know yeah. as I say don't do those things uh I said go and get a second opinion have a reading with with somebody else I can even recommend you I'll recommend you another medium and she's like no I just want you yeah <laughs> so there is that side to it as well yeah. which is lovely you know uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's why clients keep coming back yeah, because they don't want to go to someone else because they they trust me. Yeah, and at the end of the day, this that's what all this work is about. It's about trust. Trust what you get. Trust spirit. Trust what you feel. Trust what you sense. Trust is really the number one word in this business. Love it. Amazing. Well. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. It's been lovely to hear your story. I will put uh, your website on the show notes so people can click through and connect with you directly. But it's been really, really lovely to hear your story. So thank you for sharing it. Oh, it's been a pleasure, Hannah. Lovely to join you today.